Alright guys. Alright, we have made it to another state. Old dog and I have now made it to New Hampshire on our little uh, our latest little jaunt across the great United States of America. It is now a turned into quite a pleasant Saturday afternoon, August 10th, 2019. Feels more like November in Austin. It is about 62 degrees outside, I believe, today. I don't know. My thermometer is saying it's 70. I'm not quite sure about that, everyone. Good Lord, can you see the can you see the motorhomes as far as the eye can see? Motorhomes on one side, motorboats on the other. I don't know what lake this is. Here is all the vacationers flocking to their little lakeside summer homes on this beautiful day. So anyway, uh, I have just finished spending two days and nights with little children for the first time and good god how many years has it been since I've uh, anyway so I, I got to meet my uh, my great nieces for the first time in my life or theirs one of them is eight and one of them is ten years old Never laid eyes on these two children, so uh, I have got to, I have been able to interact with small children in the, on this collapsing planet and just remembering why, uh, well, for several reasons I don't spend any time with small children. But of course, the most recent reason in my life, to add to all the other reasons not to spend time with small children is, you know, you, you don't want to get attached to small children, you know, especially when they're, they're your own bloodline and you, well, these really were cool little kids, I have to say. I don't mind saying my great nieces are for small children, they're pretty cool. Uh, you know, for an eight and ten year old, they seem, you know, a little more clued in than the, I don't know, and I don't know how clued in most eight and ten year olds are. I'm glad to say that I never saw either one of these children ever pick up a phone pick up a smartphone or a tablet the entire time I saw them. They do not live inside their little, uh, you know, their little machines, kind of like I do. They actually spend a lot less time on their little, on their little social media gadgets and whatnot than I did. Now, of course, it was actually the eight-year-old when she heard I had a YouTube channel. Oh, boy. That set her off when she heard that her great uncle Sam was a YouTube star and she really wanted to see if, uh, to obviously, she wanted to check out Humpty Dumpty Tribe. I made the mistake of telling her the name of my channel, and so of course, you know, she hears Humpty Dumpty. I don't know what she expected. She asked. She was talking about a, a, a uh, it sounded like she was saying Lambo. Had I bought a Lambo, I guess she was saying Lambro, and I didn't know what she was talking about, and my sister had to translate. What she was asking me was whether I had bought a Lamborghini, a Lamborghini with the money I had made on YouTube that uh, I guess this is the the eight-year-olds of America their big dream is to become YouTube stars so they can 
uh, buy a Lamborghini. We just passed the Shaker Dog Park. Coming up to the Shaker Museum. You know, the Shakers that they did not believe in breeding. So that was the end of their religion. Did I hear, I think there might be one old lady Shaker. She might have just died. Here's the Shaker Farm bed and breakfast. I think the last Shaker, last I heard, she was 104 years old. And uh, once she died, and I think we might have lost the last Shaker. Uh, good for the Shakers. Uh, that's what happens when you're not a clueless moron and, and your religion is to stop breeding. Well, there you go see what happens to your religion but anyway it was I wasn't here to talk about shakers I was you know here to talk about just just one more reason not to have little children in your life because uh, you you don't want to get attached to little children when you know just the the unmitigated hell they are going to see in their life and the the ten-year-old is already talking about you know when she has children this ten-year-old child just you know at age 10 just already buying into the to the motherhood trap so anyway, uh, last night we had this big barbecue and I guess four more adults. How many people were there? There were, four, I guess there were eight adults and four children. So we had this big barbecue last night. So the kids went off and played and with absolutely zero prompting from me. Absolutely, I, I swear guys. I had nothing to do with this at all. Uh, the conversation actually turned to the apocalypse. This was my my 37 year old niece, uh, my 37 year old niece, who is the mother of this eight and ten year old, who has a little bit of a twisted sense of humor. I was, I hadn't seen. Uh, I hadn't seen my niece uh, since she was pregnant with the 10 year old and so I mean so most of the people there so at least four of the people there had no clue what I do I uh, had no clue uh, about either one of my channels knew absolutely nothing about me so I don't even know how the subject of the upcoming apocalypse came up in conversation. This is what was the topic of conversation and my 37 year old niece, the, you know, the mother of these two children, you know, just joking around uh, saying when the apocalypse gets here that she goes, uh, she goes, there's nothing I can do about it. So what I am going to do is run out into the middle of the street and hope I get run over. Uh, that's going to be, that is her plan for the apocalypse. Uh, you know, she, she says she wants nothing to do with the collapse of global industrial civilization. And so she's hoping uh, that there will be just enough cars left running down the road that she can jump in front of a car and get run over and killed so she doesn't have to endure Mad Max. And that was welcome to some laughter. And, you know, she lives in North Carolina and there was some joking with the New Englanders that maybe, you know, she could escape to a boat, to a sailboat off the outer banks of North Carolina and sail up uh, to the coast of Maine and make her way, you know, to the, to the, 
compound. My sister and her husband have 265 acre, uh, you know, their, their little compound in Vermont. And then my sister just chimes in something about the F-35s. The F-35 warplanes getting nuclear bomb capability or something and that if the F-35 warplane becomes nuclear capable then Burlington, Vermont which I guess is where the airfield is, I don't know that Burlington, Vermont, which is about 30 miles from my sister's house, will become some sort of, uh, you know, nuclear target for Russia or China or North Korea or whoever. So, you know, they have a red, my, my the roof on my sister's house. They have a red metal roof and she was, uh, you know, joking around how she hopes that if it, it, that if uh, Burlington, Vermont becomes a nuclear target, that somehow they mistake her red metal roof as the you, you know the the missile somehow mistakes her roof for Burlington and so the the nuclear bomb will be a direct hit onto her house so uh, she doesn't have to suffer you, you know radiation burns peeling the skin off her body you know and, and and that got some laughter around the room you know this was the grandmother of these two little girls talking about wanting to be directly in the path of a nuclear bomb while the little girl's mother was talking about uh, jumping in front of a car when the apocalypse gets here because there's not a damn thing she can do about it. I don't know guys and and I uh, the, the only time I chimed in at some point the discussion got around to the fact I don't know if it's the eight-year-old or the ten-year-old uh, takes this baseball bat named Petunia she has her her own personal baseball bat named Petunia. Oh yeah, we were talking about Cooperstown, New York and the Baseball Hall of Fame. So I guess maybe her father... Anyway, somehow she ended up with her own personal baseball bat and that she sleeps. So she keeps this baseball bat by the side of her bed. They live in this little small town down in North, is it North Carolina or South Carolina? Anyway, they live in this little small town and uh, this 10 year old child sleeps with a baseball bat uh, beside her bed. And the only comment I made in this whole conversation, I, I swear guys, you know, I said, well, darling, I, I said your kid's baseball bat very well might come in handy during this Mad Max apocalypse you're talking about heading this way and she agreed with me yes that she is glad that her 10 year old child is armed with her own personal baseball bat to uh, survive Mad Max and so I guess what it's become is, you know, these, uh, these millennials with kids now that the apocalypse is now just a subject to, uh, you know, to joke around about at a Saturday night barbecue. And, but, I, you know, but I was glad to see 
uh, that my 37-year-old niece uh, thinks the uh, apocalypse and the approaching Mad Max is so funny. And I, I, I don't know, guys. There just seems to be some sort of disconnect. That would someone explain this to me, that how a 37 year old woman with uh, an eight year old and a 10 year old daughters and they I guess my sister is a 67 year old grandmother with two granddaughters can can just sit here and uh, and laugh about the upcoming apocalypse while uh, munching on barbecue. Uh, there you go. I'm glad. Uh, I, I am glad that the the ironic, sick, twisted, black sense of humor is alive and well in my family, because uh, that's really more than a baseball bat. You are going to need. These two little girls uh, are going to need the sick, twisted, ironic sense of humor, I guess, to go along with their baseball bat when their mother jumps in front of a an oncoming truck to get put out of her misery, and and their grandmother is is hoping the. Uh, red roof on top of their house will bring in a direct hit from a nuclear strike. Uh, you might as well get out there and laugh while you still can and grab your baseball bat. And, uh, See what the future brings and don't make any friends with eight-year-olds in the year 2019 and uh, so I don't know whether I will ever say the see these kids again I I gave their mother a hug and I said well I said if uh, the apocalypse hits between now and the time I see you again Nice knowing you, darling. Gave her a hug, and that was it. I have no idea whether I will ever lay eyes on my niece or my great nieces again, as long as we all shall live. And uh, I am back on the road again. Thinking about baseball bats on this beautiful day in the end times on the open road. Bye guys. Let's see we're now at 66 degrees. 66 degrees on August 10th. Settle dog. This is New Hampshire. Usually, are there chippies in New Hampshire? There's probably chippies in New Hampshire.